Hello, my name's Alice Gray and welcome to another episode of Grey Matter, the series of science shorts that talks all things brain and cracks all things cranium. So for this video I thought we'd do something a little bit different, I thought I'd give you a tour of the science books on my bookshelf. This could potentially be a very long video so I'm going to do this as a series, so think of this as the first chapter. So let's start with the author that takes up most room on my bookshelf and that is the one and only Oliver Sacks. I have quite a few of his books and I'm slowly gathering more and more. So in my hand I have The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat, Awakenings and Musicophilia. Oliver Sacks was a neuroscientist and he writes amazingly and really accessibly about neurological conditions using patient stories. And the reason I like Oliver Sacks is because he writes in a way that allows us to explore the neurological conditions. And even though he's a clinician, he writes in a brilliantly human way and allows us to connect with the real life experiences behind the stories. And if you aren't a particular fan of books, there is actually a really good film of his book, Awakenings, that stars Robert De Niro and Robin Williams. So next on my bookshelf is a book that is quite close to home, and that's The Idiot Brain by Dean Burnett. And the reason it's close to home is because he's a neuroscientist from Cardiff, just like me. And not only is he a writer, a neuroscientist, but he is also a comedian. And that means that he hilariously explores the sort of weird and wonderful functions and failures of the human brain. So the next set of books we're going to look at aren't necessarily popularised science books, but I suppose they're more like politicised science books. So first off, let's start with my books by Ben Goldacre. Um, he's a science writer and a doctor, and he aims to sort of unpick misleading information. Um, and I have Bad Science and Bad Pharma. And as a warning, I'm really sorry if my opinions about these books don't necessarily resonate with yours. So Bad Pharma is a look at the pharmaceutical industry, looking at drug trials and pharmaceutical companies. And as much as I loved Bad Pharma because it talked about the corruption within these industries, and I think that's really an important issue, I do feel like it was totally anti-pharma and I don't know how I feel about that. I also have his book Bad Science which talks about misleading information and it's a really good read, covers everything from homeopaths to nutritionists. Now the next book on my shelf is The Geek Manifesto by Mark Henderson. It talks about how science can help cut crime and improve health statistics and how more MPs and government employees should have a background in STEM to help improve political decisions. And as much as I agree with that, and as much as I think that more scientists should start governmental careers and be involved in governmental decision making, I do feel like sometimes I get the impression that this is a very pro-science books in that science can do no wrong, and the next book on my list kind of proves that that's not strictly true. And that book leads me to this book, Inferior by Angela Staney, and I hope I'm saying your name right. This book eloquently and precisely explains how scientists are also affected by bias and biased scientists create biased results. And in this book Angela explores the consequences of biased science in how gender stereotypes have shaped scientific conclusions and how these conclusions can have real life consequences for women. It's certainly a must read. So that's it for this episode of Grey Matter and for the first instalment of my science bookshelf tour. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and if you have any book recommendations, please leave a comment and stay tuned for next time.